Have you ever looked into someone else's or maybe even your own previous analysis and asked yourself, just how did you come up with that number? Well, don't worry, we've definitely been there. And that's why Quiver provides you with an overview of all of your analysis steps, of all the object sets that you took, all of the charts that you created and all the transformations in between, and all that in the dependency graph. The dependency graph is essentially an interactive view into your analysis lineage. And it can be an extremely powerful tool if you want to organize or expand or refactor your own analysis, whilst providing the maximum level of transparency to you and your colleagues. In this video, we'll give you a tour of the dependency graph and show you how to expand on an existing analysis using graph mode only. Let's start. Let's take a closer look at the dependency graph for the analysis that we have built in previous videos. This dependency graph is automatically generated in the background and updated with each analysis step you perform. You can switch from the canvas or dashboard mode into graph mode. Note that switching to graph mode does not compromise your analysis layout on the canvas, so you can really switch between them whenever you need to. Graph mode is exceptionally useful to keep track of each step, especially as your analysis grows larger and larger. Now let's examine this graph in a bit more detail. At the top of the graph, we have our base object set, the 17 airlines that we have started our analysis with. After having selected one airline in the selection table that you might recognize from the canvas view, we end up with an object set containing a single airline. After having narrowed down our airlines to SkyWest Airlines, we performed an object search round and grabbed all flights that were linked to this particular airline. Note that the result is a subset of the entire flights dataset, since only SkyWest flights will appear here. And only, for instance, Delta flights would appear if we selected Delta in our table above instead. If we wanted to expand our analysis here, and add all aircrafts that belong to SkyWest Airlines, we could create a new branch in our analysis and search around for these objects using the action bar below the object set in the dependency graph. The dependency graph is therefore not view only, but it actually provides you with exactly the same analysis features as the canvas view. Now, when you switch back to the canvas, you will notice that a new object set containing all aircraft related to SkyWest Airlines has been added at the bottom of your analysis. Let's hide it again for now by removing it from the canvas. Switching back to the dependency graph, you will see that the object set with all aircrafts is still there, even though it is not visible anymore on the canvas. This is a key concept and the main difference between canvas and graph view. On the canvas, you can reduce the noise and focus on only the analysis outcomes, whereas the dependency graph gives you a full overview of your analysis lineage. If we scroll down and look at the next two elements on the dependency graph, we will recognize the two charts that we have used in our analysis. Both of these two charts aggregate all of the data from their parent object set, the flights performed by SkyWest Airlines. The pie chart, however, has been used to further drill down into the data, and we can see that the highlighted selection of the 2% cancelled flights has resulted in a derived and significantly smaller object set containing only cancelled flights. Finally, these cancelled flights have then been plotted over time, as we can see looking at the graph here. And then we also performed a search around for all routes linked to the cancelled flights. Note here again that this object set is derived only off the cancelled flights themselves. So on the flip side, this means that routes that have experienced no cancellations are not included here. In fact, Let's see if we can get an object set containing all routes that haven't ever had a flight cancelled. In order to do this, we need to move up the drill down analysis tree again 
and search around for all routes that SkyWest flies. Just by comparing these two numbers, we can see that there are roughly 1,600 routes in total. But if we look on the bottom of the analysis tree, only 1,000 routes have experienced cancellations. So now let's do some quick set math to remove the cancelled routes from the set of all routes. In order to do this, we need to select the two object sets that we want to perform the math on. We'll name this new object set All Routes Without Cancellations. Great! Now we can use this object set to finalize our analysis. The only thing that I still feel is missing from my analysis is a direct comparison of the number of flights on routes that have experienced cancellations versus routes that have not experienced cancellations. But instead of creating an entirely new chart, let's just add this newly created object set, the routes without any cancellations, to our existing chart. Once we have done this, you can now see that instead of one line, we have two lines that connect both input object sets to this chart. Taking a step back and zooming out of the chart we now enhanced, we can see that our analysis has grown. And even after adding more complexity to our analysis, it is still easy for us to follow which object set is derived from where and what data the charts in our analysis actually rely on. So we could now come back to our analysis tomorrow or in five weeks and pick up exactly where we left off, because none of our trains of thought have been lost. So now that you know how to navigate the dependency graph, we'll expand on this a little bit more in the next video and show you how to use parameters to create an interactive dashboard on the basis of the analysis that we created beforehand. See you in the next video.